is a foregone conclusion, no way to turn it around, no way to stop it now? I'm saying yes. We're going to, the next time we have a recession, and we're going to have one, I guarantee you, it's going to be worse than anything we've experienced in the last few decades. It is Tuesday, the 15th day of November 2011. The chairman of the Libertarian Party is scheduled to be joining us coming up here at the bottom of the hour. And then investigative journalist, historian, and economist Webster Tarpley traveled to Syria. We'll be reporting live from Syria with us. Coming up for a little bit of the third hour, then to your phone calls. Uh, we've got just some incredible news here with the Occupy Wall Street ousted. Look at this headline out of the uh, New York Post. NYPD raiders roust Occupy Wall Street rabble. Whether you agree or disagree with Occupy Wall Street's general aims, whether they are run by Obama or not, certainly Obama tried to take them over, calling American demonstrators rabble is disgusting. And apparently you can only occupy other countries, not this one. I mean, I thought America was a free speech zone. And I have confirmed, and I want to do a report on this, I've confirmed here in Austin and in New York, and I'm getting the documentation together, that the police were ordered going back over a month ago in early October that when they arrest homeless for sleeping under bridges or release them out of jail for disorderly conduct or release them out of mental institutions, they're telling them, go to the Occupy camp, there's free food there, and you're allowed to stay there. And that's why it totally degenerated into even if they had porta potties, the homeless are drunk out of their mind or whatever, some of them, defecating on the ground, all this, you know, uh, TB showing up. What do you think's in the prisons? They're saying they got to shut these down because TB showed up. Okay, well, what's going on in the prisons? And I watch video. We got some of them posted at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com of the police just beating the snot out of people for no reason and getting off on it. That's what tyranny looks like. It'd be one thing if the police are ordered to and they're saying, you know, they've been there too long or whatever to try to move people out of an area. But they are enjoying in the mob psychology attacking people. And the New York Post calls them rabble. Rabble means a organization or group of criminals and ne'er-do-wells, uh, people that are not held in high regard in society. Uh, scum. And they're just generally saying protesters are scum. In fact, guys, let me get the exact definition. Will you? Uh, I know we're about to go back to the Jim Rogers video, but later I'll actually give you the definition of rabble, but the one I gave you is pretty darn good. Just total demonization. Uh, meanwhile, see, once tyrants break the Bill of Rights and Constitution or the Constitution of the country that was protecting the people, once you convert to an oppressive system of all the different flavors of it, it certainly is 31 flavors or more. Then the dissent accelerates. You'll see more tyranny in a year once corruption's really taken over than you saw in the previous hundred. And now, and this is how I read their announcement, it was a different than just a super committee. It was a super Congress, 12 members, spending bills originate from them now, not from the House. The House and Senate can vote it up or down, but then if they don't vote for it, it just goes back to the super committee, who then automatically puts into place whatever they already agreed on. That is so incredible. That is dictatorship hidden in plain view, and people go, well, no, the Congress gets to vote. It's just if they don't do what the super Congress says, then they go ahead with the automatic spending cuts that they decide where to place them. But you notice that they never say cut the tens of trillions given to foreign bankers. It's always raise taxes, cut spending to pay it to the bankers who got us into this mess. As they now admit, private, corporate, bank of the world, dictatorship being set up in Europe. That's not Alex Jones. That's London Telegraph, Associated Press, Time Magazine. But they're saying it's good. Secret farm bill, prime for passage, 
in debt deal. You're not allowed to see it. Remember five years ago, Bush's third amnesty plan? And they said, it's not amnesty, but you can't see it. Remember that in the news? So incredible. And then Senator Sessions leaked it. They threatened to censure him, but they couldn't for doing his job. Let those criminals try that. And it, what was Senator Sessions' uh, piece called on his website? The 20 smoking guns, and then he went over the 20 loopholes of it, and it said, well, they're right, it isn't amnesty, it's total amnesty for even aggravated felons. They sign a pledge to not commit aggravated felonies again. Aggravated felonies, that's knocking you on the head, raping people, armed robbery, arson, aggravated. It's not just a crime, you did it with a gun, you did it with a club, you beat somebody over the head. That's why I don't respect this government. It's not real because they openly release criminals and then throw the book at citizens with made up garbage. So we're going to get to that. Uh, let's go back, though, now to uh, the guy that's made tens of billions of dollars through his big hedge funds, uh, a guy who's probably called the markets as accurate or more accurate than anybody out there, Jim Rogers. Uh, we'll get to more of this interview uh, that I did last night on uh, InfoWars Nightly News. The whole thing's posted at PrisonPlanet.tv. Here it is. Okay. Uh, th then just to be clear, then, uh, you are saying that a global financial collapse is a foregone conclusion, no way to turn it around, no way to stop it now? I'm saying yes. We're going to, the next time we have a recession, and we're going to have one, I guarantee you, it's going to be worse than anything we've experienced in the last few decades because of the stacked amounts of debt that have been built up in the U.S. and in Europe. Now, there's a way. Sure, we could, we could take an alternative course. We could accept reality. We could let people fail. All those guys on Wall Street should have failed. The idea that they're still driving their Lamborghinis is outrageous. As far as I'm concerned, they're all getting their bonuses. Outrageous, as far as I'm concerned. You and I are paying for it. We could do that. We could let them fail. We could take our pain, admit our mistakes. It would be very bad for two or three years, Alex. There's no question. It would be a mess. But the alternative is to have 10, 20, 30 years of more lost decades and lost years from our lives. All right, Jim Rogers is our guest. We're honored to have him and a, a premier uh, interview with him on the exercise bike. I'm actually loving this. I think this is pretty, pretty media worthy. And, and again, we appreciate uh, your time and joining us. Shifting gears to North America. I know you're uh, out in Singapore now and later I'll ask you why you're there and, and your prognosis in this global meltdown for Asia versus Europe, uh, North America, Latin America, um, Africa, you know, basically your global perspective and what you're investing in right now. But here at home, Ron Paul predicted all of this 30 years ago on sound Austrian economics. Uh, I, I, I know that you study a little bit as well. And now he is being demonized, or, and that's when he's lucky. They've done scientific studies now uh, that show that he's getting the least amount of time at the debates, that when he does get coverage, it's negative, uh, that uh, th also when he wins first, second, or third place, Fox, MSNBC, CNN, now uh, uh, CBS will not show him in the poll rankings. So if he gets number one, they say number two was number one. Or if he gets number three, they skip him and move number four into number three. And we just caught CBS over the weekend doing it again. It became a national news story. But wait, it gets better. It was a 90-minute debate. Uh, Jim, but only an hour was televised. Of the televised debate, he was given 90 seconds. And it turns out a memo came out uh, when uh, Rick Perry was given, I don't know, like eight minutes, Mitt Romney more than 10. I mean, if this isn't a rigged horse race, uh, what's your view on that and why they're scared of Ron Paul? Well, it's clear, uh, and I've read the same things you have, it's clear that they're biased against Ron Paul. Uh, I don't know why. I guess the only reason is because he's the only one who talks good sense. He's the only one who knows how to solve the problems. I happen to agree with nearly everything he said and have for a long time. And it's just so different to what all these journalists have been brought up reading and believing and writing. I mean, they all go to the same, the same schools where they're taught chains and failure. 
And so they think that this guy, who's got a different view, must be and let's ignore it. Unfortunately for them, he's the only one, not the only one, but he's one of the few who's got it right. And somebody, I don't know if the electorate will get it in time, but he's one of the few who knows what has to be done. D Jim, looking at history, looking at geopolitical movements, looking at finance that you've studied so long and investment so accurately, and that's the real gauge of a tree is its fruits. Your fruits have been very successful and stable over a long period of time. Well, uh, seriously, looking into your crystal ball, I mean, uh, and then looking at the United States, it's clear they're not going to listen to Ron Paul. He is the only one of those Republicans that is talking sense, uh, and, and one of only a few prominent people in the U.S. talking sense. The establishment wants to go the same direction, crony capitalism, insiders being guaranteed by the public, so much you and Congressman Paul have talked about. And now the, the, the elite are financing the welfare class to be their political army to demand more and more off the tit. And I see historically real calamities, real collapse, real social unrest uh, here in the U.S. Obama has already tried to sick the Occupy Wall Street people on the middle class, claiming you know that he's anti-corruption in Wall Street when he's financed by it. So what do you see for America and Europe? I mean, do you see a lot of really unstable things happening? Because it's clear they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to Ron Paul. They know you're right. It's why they're scared of you. So, so is this ship going to hit the iceberg? What's going to happen? What do you see? Where do you see America in five years? Well, first, there's also a guy named Gary Johnson who is running for for my nation. He seems to get it too, as well. I mean, not he hasn't been as prominent so long as Ron has. But he also seems to get it. But what's going to happen? That's what I've said many times. There's going to be more social unrest all over the world. We've already had some governments fail and some countries fail. You know, this whole Sandusky situation at Penn State is just a tiny window into the world of the globalist and the New World Order. They are a collection of degenerate scum. A lot of them have different taste, but they all want to carry out crime against humanity. It is their twisted lot in life. They are the minority. They are white. They are black. They are German. They are Chinese. They are Jewish. They are Arabic. They are Mexican. They are Japanese. But they are all part of their own culture of wickedness, and they are waging war against free humanity. That's why I don't get into people's religions, people's race, the system tries to play us off against each other. I look at the contents of individuals' minds, what they stand for, what they believe in. And the globalist, uh, looking at this Newt Gingrich situation, I'm going to talk to the head of the Libertarian Party about this in a moment. Looking at this Newt Gingrich situation, and, and, and I'm going to do reports this week into next week on this. They are now saying he is the front runner, even above Mitt Romney. Globalist Council on Foreign Relations professor picked by the globalist in Georgia to run for Congress to kill the Republican conservative revolution of 94. He wrote the foreword and sections of two books, bestsellers by Alvin and Heidi Toffler. That's where he was discovered by the establishment and they got him to run for Congress. And, you know, I actually got one of the books here. I'm going to go dig it out. Later, in fact, a few weeks ago, I meant to cover it, but he was still so low. And I said, watch him power surge, because these, most of these polls are fake. <clears throat> the system's going to bring him in. The, 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 uh, they're really pushing him right now. But he wrote in those books, he said, America's got to get rid of its sovereignty and be part of a new world order global government. But he sold it like it was technology and the future and the information age. Yes, a technocracy. Technology's neutral, at least at this form of its development. But it's being puppeteered towards evil. And then every time I mention he supports carbon taxes, I get emails saying I'm a liar. Well, look, if you don't know that, I can't help you, okay? I mean, you could just type into Google to the NSA search engine, Newt Gingrich promotes carbon taxes or Newt Gingrich uh, promotes uh, global warming. And you'll see him in speeches, at dinners. You'll see TV ads he did with Nancy Pelosi. It's got to be.